Hi, I'm Spencer Krauss. I've been building robots for over 20 years. In that time, I've seen a lot of interesting things, and I've heard a lot of interesting stories. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is a place where my peers and I can relax, have a drink, and talk about some of the crazier things we've seen at work and some of the experiences we've had that have gotten us to where we are today. Subscribe today to join the collaboration. Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Jen Rocket. Jen is the owner and lead designer of Jen Rocket LLC, a company specializing in sewn product development. Jen, welcome to the pod. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming on, buddy. It's good to have you yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to talk about sewing. I'm excited to hear about sewing. Yeah. So what I do, uh, I always say uh, engineering with fabric. Sweet. Because that's what I do. Because it takes forethought and pre-thought and experience and um, processes. Makes sense to me. And I mean, I've, I've seen some of it up close, but for people listening, what are some of the things you've worked on? So uh, basically, sewing is um, in uh, dozens and dozens of industries all over the world. So from the clothes you're wearing to the upholstered seat you're sitting on to the tablecloth in front of you to uh, there was probably there's there's some sewing involved in strappings here. It is something that is around so much and it's all, you know, maybe just so common it's taken for granted a little bit, but there was engineering and thinking. And what's most, the coolest part about sewing to me is that when a design is correct, it's invisible. Maybe that's the coolest thing about industrial design and product design anyway. Sure. I mean, yeah. And like, I think, yeah, I mean, your Apple watch, for instance, like just yeah. kind of blends yeah. into the rest of the jewelry. Right. Well, I did make the straps. They look pretty good. I did that because I make stretch bracelets for fun. And I was like, this is not, I did that. So, but yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that on, on a different one. So that makes sense. Oh yeah. Because I did it. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. And I also alter my own clothes and I sew my own curtains. And if I can sew something in my household, it's, it's cool. Yeah. yeah it's. That's awesome. I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So when we were walking in uh, to the studio, I snagged mm. a shirt and just ripped the whole front off of it. And Jen was like, you, do you have someone that can sew those buttons back on? I was like, I think so. And yeah. you were like, and I, I didn't even think about it, but I was like, there's nobody else I would have rather that happen with just because like, you know, you're one of the few people that are like, all you got to do is sew those buttons back on. Like, yeah. you'll be fine. I'm like, I've just ruined. No, no, no. It's fine. He's so sad. And it was like an yeah. expensive shirt is very fancy and special. I'm like, I will sew that on for you right now. To, my kid is in the car, you know, and it's okay. <laughs> and that's what's great about sewing is that it, or it, you know, it you can fix it and you can change it and update it, you know. So that's something I like to do with um, my wardrobe a lot or things around the house is if I can fix it before I buy something new, that's great. And it's this longevity thing. And it's this material that you don't have to throw away, especially in the age we live in now, worrying about recycling and plastic and, and all that. It's with textiles. You can, it has, there's a little bit more shelf life to it if you have some creativity. Yeah, so you just keep it alive, basically, with improvements and then also just repairs. Yeah, and, and celebration of what it was before and its new existence. Yeah. There's magic in that. It's super cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So what are, what are some of the actual goods that you've gotten to work on? So like you've told me a little bit, but just for people listening, like what are, what are some of the projects you're particularly proud of? Particularly proud of are the ones that help um, create a better world for humans who uh, need help. So wearable technology, wearable medical devices uh, in particular, probably the biggest thing. And, but that also, uh, it extends to things we use. You know, if there is a soft good that needs to go on a walking uh, a walker or a wheelchair awesome. or also like something to shade you from the sun. I'm being very pale. It's the sun <laughs> is very scary. So anything that can make that a little bit easier without having to put chemicals on your skin. Um, so I would say just helping humanity, yeah. you know, so I and, and so what you can do is you can blend um, industrial design with that and, and um, something that is productive for people with needs um, and then hopefully have it be a little bit of longevity and not disposable. That makes, so like, the same yeah. attitude you talk about, like bringing into clothing alterations, bringing into all mm -hmm. sorts of different soft goods. Yeah, because there's such a big disposable thing that can easily happen with plastics. And let me be fair, yeah. a lot of fabrics are made of plastics. I can point at four of them right now in front of me. They're made of plastics. That's for sure. Yeah, and I, but I could <laughs> re-sew that 
you know? <laughs> yeah. Probably the leather in this chair is, is it, polyester. It's probably not real leather, yeah. Yeah. But it might be. I don't know. I don't know Give me a lighter. The, I got these chairs. <laughs> Will my chair catch fire? Well, it'll melt or, it, or it'll smell funny. That's the difference. <laughs> so either way, it's, it's getting a little bit destroyed. <laughs> I'm not going to destroy your chair. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got to find a lighter now. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Mm. So... Um, I guess, how did you get on this road? Like, what are what are some of the things that you kind of did, like, as a kid that made you decide, like, I want to work on, you know, sewn, you know, product development? Well, when I was three, my mom was doing a daycare, and she was sewing. She was a third-generation seamstress. Her mother sewed, grandmother, you know, and I think that was a lot of people going back and from the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, as their stitching was a household skill. And um, my mom picked it up and then she was trying to keep us busy and she wanted to be near us and be creative. She was always very artistic and creative with us. And so she showed us how to, she started with pinning shapes and then we would pin the shapes, trace them on paper and then, or no, on fabric. And then she would cut them out and she would sew them together for us, me and Jessica and Sandy. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, at three, you know, cause she wanted us involved. Is so, Sandy also into sewing goods? Yeah, she sews. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, she's more, she's a psychologist, but she sews for fun. Cool. Um, and, and the, then Jess obviously does. Like, I, I know yeah. her. She does interesting work for sure. Yeah. And, and so when sh the shapes weren't right, Jessica would get very upset. And then, and I would, I'll like, so when mom noticed that we all want, always wanted the shapes to be correct. And she was like, wow. So she's like, okay, these kids, they want to do the shapes and they care and they can, they can see the, them coming. Because we were just pinning random blobs on fabric. And from then, she showed us how to sew buttons giant plastic needles and yarn and then we were hand sewing beads and then our great grandmother and our grandmother were uh, supporting us every Christmas we got sewing kits as a gift and we learned pattern making and pattern cutting and uh, hand sewing and so by the age of five I was begging to get on the sewing machine I sat like under it waiting by the age of five five and, and starting from three. Okay, so that was two years. Of, yeah, I was yeah. like waiting. I know I, I was like going back and forward in time there. Um, so yeah, it's history. It's family. That's um, awesome. Yeah, and I, I really love that. I, I feel very fortunate to have been... I didn't get uh, started making things till I was six. I feel like you got to jump on me. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's just a few years. Um, and even hot gluing before that, like, you know. But I, I creating things that don't exist, I think, was the biggest the impact for me you know and then the technique yeah. you know my great grandmother too. would say like if you make these little hand stitches straight it would be so great wouldn't it and then my grandmother would say but when you read the directions you understand what the notches are for and what the lines are for isn't it wonderful that you can create what was in the picture and I'm like yeah yeah that, was that is wonderful <laughs> so that's how I started and so I never stopped that's awesome yeah so, wait, so just as somebody that doesn't sew at all, like you can get a pattern and, and just replicate it at home basically and, and make the thing. Yeah. Yeah. You buy that packet at Joann's. You get the fabric that you're supposed to get on the back. Please, please read the back. Make sure you get enough. <laughs> make sure you get the right notions. And then, goodness, I hope you know how to use your sewing machine. What's a notion in this context? Because uh, I'm, I'm so dumb in this, in oh, this way. Oh, sure. Notions it. are like the thread, the zippers, um, buttons, snaps. Uh, trim of any kind so just anything that isn't fabric right yeah that would be the notion Got yeah, it. buckles you know that kind of thing um and then you know follow the instructions and uh you know hopefully you make it right and if you make it if you like have a flare and you make it a little different cool collaborative with spencer kraus is sponsored by ska robotics if you're in the market for elite field robotics expertise please consider hiring ska robotics they sponsor this podcast and solve some of the toughest engineering problems in the world. SKA Robotics can be found at skarobotics.com. As they say with, you know, Alexander McQueen, you learn the rules and you break them. Nice. So yeah. it's like, kind of like cooking or... Yes. Yeah. That's what's wonderful about sewing. And I'm so glad you said that because I feel like uh, people don't equate sewing as this other kind of thing you can do where, you know, it's like people are surprised and they come to it and they're like, oh, I love it. And it's a great. And it's like, well, it was always there. It was waiting for you, you know, just like cooking or, you know, Plain any other kind of, yeah, yeah like, any kind of skill, you know, it's not that different. It's materials, processes, thought. Yep. Yeah. 
and the better you get at the technical aspects, the more your ideas can just come the out. The easier it is. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, <laughs> too, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think for me, like, I mean, that's definitely the case with, you know, product development as well. I mean, I, I deal more in hardware, and I guess the teams that I orchestrate do a little bit in software, but it's different. I mean, it's different, but it's not that different. Like, I mean, you f figure out a thing, and you sketch it out, and move it down the line, and then you manifest it. Make sure it works. Make sure it works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and make sure it's replicable if that's where you're going with yeah, it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that when you're when you're working with fabric? Um, well, I guess it's the same process. You know, it's a set of tools that you use to create an item that you can make sure that whatever it was that you did can be created by other people. Yeah. But that's like just one aspect. Well, that makes it. sense in principle. But I guess yeah. what I'm really asking is like, do you kind of start? free form and make a thing and then like take it apart and then like trace out all the things and then oh, like, model those okay. or like yeah oh definitely all the do things you, do you start with paper and then make a pattern first and then turn that into fabric great question great great question so i'm going to put some context to this and and from my experience because i feel like that that will be helpful so when i learned how to sew it was just wing it you take fabric and then you like just like make it be what you want to be OK, okay. Um, but then um, when I was in just like different jobs and different places and people were talking about like, you know, technical aspects of it, I was like, oh, you know, where where I was living, I, I didn't have access to uh, any school that taught any kind of sewing stuff until I did. And then I went and I and then I had more of the technical. So in short, I learned how to sew with wovens and knits, knowing the fabric for the fabric itself not knowing the technical stuff or like whatever the educational background is. It was all family, okay? Yeah. So, but then you go out into the world, like me in Los Angeles, working for uh, fashion designers and, you know, and they're like talking about the green line and all this stuff. I'm like, well, and they're like, wait, how did you sew and sell clothes not knowing this or that term? And I was like, I just know the fabrics. So while I was there, I went ahead and just took three years of school. I was going to do it anyway. Um, and I just worked that into, but what happened to me with that is that I learned flat pattern drafting, which is a different way of getting, like if I were gonna make your shirt, you know, I could do flat pattern drafting for that because menswear is very geometric. So I'm oh, actually using a series of, of, and this is all on paper, this is not in a program. You can do it in a program, of course, but this is not how my journey was, is that you take a line and another line and then you map it out and you measure using your dimensions to create the pattern and curves and everything. And then well, I can cut it out of fabric and put it together. Or if I'm going to make like this shirt and this skirt, I would have my mannequin and I would drape it where I take the knits and I use the fall and the weight of it. And I pin it and make it curl in just the right way. And then I take that off of the mannequin. I lay it down on a blank piece of paper and I trace around that. Add the seam allowance, add whatever instructions and stuff. You know, so so that is where I found like, oh, and I had this big moment of do I drape or do I draft forever? And it was like, you So draft is like paper first. Drape is like starting with the fabric. Exactly. Yeah. So I either go with measurements or I go with reality and gravity and knits. So drafting is drafting. Moments. Sorry, but, draping, draping. Yeah. 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 Um, so to answer your question in a shorter way. Whatever the no, project like the requires. Yeah, I know. It's super fun. <laughs> I love the journey of it. And that's why it's so amazing. And I'll never stop. Um, but it can be either one. And sometimes I do them both. But I had to figure out in this crazy way that there were two realities and then put them together. And um, I, I would say that a pattern I made a week ago, the pattern I make today is going to be better. Because every other one you make after learning all that experience, like it all culminates and like everything you do every day after that is better than you did the day before. And it's just based on experience. Well, that makes sense. I mean, are you talking about like if you make anything? Or are you talking about like iterating on the same design? Both. Okay. Oh, yeah. I feel like iteration is, is really wonderful. And I, I wish people gave themselves more time. And I wish that, that the world gave people more time to experiment and iterate. Because I guess that makes sense. I mean, like I've gotten much better as a robotics professional just from doing it for a while. And like yeah. I... The stuff I can build now is way better than the stuff I could build 10 years ago. And mm -hmm. so, like, I think that's... Yeah, again, we have these... Uh, these. Uh, that's why I love industrial design. It fits part and parcel together. And I feel like maybe some colleges 
and university is just now maybe understanding that soft goods is, is part of what programs, and I'm sure the programs are out there, and maybe they've been out there for five or six years at this point, um, but they weren't when I was in college. I cobbled it together, and I did That's it myself. Well, what about that three years of schooling in Los Angeles, though? Like, was, uh -huh. was that like a soft goods program, or did you just? No. I just went to LA Trade Tech, and I went to the program manager, and I said, I just want to take all the sewing classes that are available, and I want to start from zero. Because I'm curious. So what caused you to move on? Did you just have some opportunity and you had to get out of there? Uh, no, I lived in L.A. for three years and I was done. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's time I lived in L.A. for three months and I was done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's an interesting part of the world for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did everything I wanted out there. Yeah. You know? And That's I was, fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, you Get it in, move on to the next thing. Yeah. So when taking those classes helped me to figure out more about sewing and to learn. And I loved being in that hub where you're surrounded by sewing. But it was also like I knew I wanted to go because there's a lot of sewing there. And when you're in a place. Didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is the that, LA Fashion is that like District. From the fashion industry, okay. Yes, yes. So you have these, all these factories everywhere. And I saw the disparities in income. Because I was working for fashion designers, so I was going into the district and I was buying fabrics, and then I was actually going to suppliers and I was going to these little shops who were creating things for for movie stars. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and they were being paid pennies to make clothes for these movie stars, and I was just like, "This I'm is." I mean, the movie stars have more money. Yeah, and the designers <laughs> are charging a lot for me in my twenties to be bouncing around and doing this like oh work. so you're like basically cheap labor for for this industry yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i got i got a decent wage cuz i was actually semi like um i was an assistant on the floor i told you what so. i made at spacex so. oh yeah <laughs> yeah it was a little more than that <laughs> nice. Good for you. No, you should have yeah. made more than that. But I, but it was really interesting to me to see all of that, all that dichotomy. And then while I was at LA, LA Trade Tech, I was taking night classes because I was working through the day. Let me be clear, at jobs throughout that whole three years, and I was going taking the train at night into downtown. I don't know how I got through that, um, and then coming back out. And so the 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 girls who were there would talk about going to learn to work in the factories and how they were timed on how fast their hands could move. And they would try and get these jobs just to piece things together. Oh, that's interesting. So wait, when you say how fast their hands would move, do you mean just like throughput or you mean just literally their hand motion? Handling. That's This is something a lot of people don't even think about. Interesting. People, I mean, is that a useful metric though? Because I feel like you could, you could get nothing accomplished with really fast moving hands. I mean, how do like, you think your clothes at, are made? Uh, hands. That's a good question. So many <laughs> hands handled your clothes. We haven't figured out how to get robots to do it yet. That's a exactly. good Exactly. Uh, because you can't. Because it's... Well, never say never. Okay, never say never. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, maybe they will. And you know what? All of our clothes can be made out of mushrooms and not plastic too. Sure. If we just need the funding and the time and the effort. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of hands go into that. And so I saw those hands working really hard. And I thought, well, this is pretty saturated. And I didn't feel like I could grow or put roots down because also Los Angeles it's like is a just race a to the bottom. big like, spiral. Yeah, a race to the bottom. And it was a big spiral of all these people doing all this stuff. And I was like, uh, I'll just... get the hell out of here. Yeah, well, my, my twin, you know, at that time, Jessica was engaged to my husband's best friend. And I was like, yeah, it was a good time to go home. So uh, our friends were moving out and we got this great little apartment and I uh, set up my business in there. Uh, after a couple of years so joey and i created a lingerie company while we were in los angeles oh that's awesome yeah so i love sewing lingerie the corsets and the bottoms and the tops and all the fun stuff and we were going to a lot of parties and like seeing all the schools so it was a great scene and we came back here and we did the numbers and it was like well um let's keep that going it's called trite you can look it up so we did that we're like okay we're gonna do because uh, joey was very business minded when we met we were working for a costume company called specter studios in 2004 to 2007 specter studios specter studios that's pretty fun <laughs> yeah, I know. It really, it really was. It was cool. Well, and Joey does creature design too. So yeah, like, yeah. Jen's husband Joey does like these amazing like they're like monsters and like all sorts of like mm -hmm. I, I'm probably not doing it justice. Like yeah, critters, creatures, um, Mother Earth on Instagram. You can see him. E R F. We were working at Spectre Studios together for like two years before we started dating, um, and we were designing and manufacturing costumes and props and masks. Um, you know, and then we just, we met Jordi Shell, and he was like, uh, you guys should come out to LA. And that's how we ended up in LA. We okay. were dating for a few months. Okay. We, so we're going nonlinear. So I know. This I know. is before I, you I were there, Spectre Studios, Trite Lingerie, yeah. then to LA. Yeah. 
trite lingerie probably blew up more out there. It, then, oh, we had trite lingerie out there. Oh, you started and it. It, it there, came okay. back with us. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh. So when we came back, we were like, okay, let's keep trite going. So we were doing photo shoots with models, and I was still creating pieces and creating the line. And then I was like, well, you know, I, I did the theater thing and I did some other sewing. And why don't I just open up this space in our house for sewing? Because my mom did. I grew up that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it felt natural. And then it turned into anything. I would do 20 shirts for a person. I would do 20 cards. shirts for who the fuck needs 20 shirts. Well, for? I'll tell you, it's a, a lot better to do 20 shirts than one shirt. I'll, and, I'm sure of it. But. And I was teaming up with Rachel Velazzi, who is a wonderful stylist in Pittsburgh. Sweet. Yeah. So she does like closet. Oh, so you would make them for her and then she'd sell them. So her, it wasn't like oh, you were, for her clients. I would alter her clients clothing all at once. Yeah. She was in closet consultation. So it's styling. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I would make sure all of this person's clothes, and they were, you know, somewhat celebrities too, musicians and artists. You but know, you just to, take their existing stuff and like yeah. spruce it up. Yeah. And so it's all about quantity. So I'm not going to do a hem for one person's pair of pants. It doesn't make sense to so go to Alterations Express. But if I'm going to alter, you know, 20 shirts or in five pairs of pants for this one person, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, financially. That's a project. Yeah. Yeah. That exactly. makes sense. So you get spun up, but you're actually mm-hmm. going to earn some coin on the gig exactly yeah yeah yeah. and i did um then that turned into uh bridal as well which i wasn't sure but i i mean i loved my wedding my wedding dress and i love dresses and i know the human form and the female form and i know when and and that's actually surgical and and um, anatomical bridal gowns you know and oh boy i did that for like five or six years and you know trite kind of waned and then we kind of put it on hold because it was like, well, that's manufacturing and that's different because at the same time of doing bridal, I was doing development where yeah, people said. So with Trite, did you shop the manufacturing out or did you do it yourself? Were there... I was doing it okay, and we cool. were going to spin it up. But then we looked at the other business coming in and said, let's do that. We made a, a decision. Yeah, that makes sense. And it was heartbreaking and sad. So you, you just know. had to you had to dump it at some point. Yeah, but I still have the patterns in the samples. Oh, sweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're not done, and I'll make them again someday yeah. or in some capacity. Well, and it sounds like you probably could delegate that at some point, you know, like if, if you I wanted to scale to. it. But you know what comes with that? Sales, marketing. I don't really like playing that game. So let's say if you if I were to sell a product I make, that means that I have to get it out in front of a bunch of people, which means I have to do all of these different uh, strategies that are in relevant to our time and I don't and sure oh yeah you can hire people to do it well that's so far away from me being a part of it then yeah I, that's fair I, I don't know I just don't and also like okay so why did I stop bridal then it was so fun and I did that for like five or six years like straight on through sure. because I realized that I don't want to spend eight hours of my day making a dress for one girl and one family when I can do something that will help hundreds of thousands of people's potentially live a better life with a medical condition or with a task they need to do or with just general productivity elevation. Yeah, that makes sense. That means a lot to me. So that's why I phased out in 2019 from bridal to all product development. That's awesome. You're like one of maybe like less than half a dozen people I know in Pittsburgh that is Mm -hmm. considers themselves a soft goods professional. Yeah, yeah. There's just not, and there was no career track for it. I made that up, non-traditional. I just didn't stop. You know? Awesome. Yeah. I mean, robotics was like that, too. So, mm-hmm. I mean, when I got my undergraduate degree, there was no robotics degree at University of Pittsburgh or at Case Western, where I was at before I transferred to University of Pittsburgh. And so, I mean, I just had to, like, you know, like, I'm going to do a little bit of programming. I'm going to do a little bit of machi- machining. I'm going to do a little bit of electrical engineering. And maybe I can mush that together into a robot. And so, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, I didn't care about the, you know, the the degree real I mean like at a certain point I, I like I was like fuck it I'll stitch this all into like a double major but like you know I, I you know really I wanted the knowledge at first and the credibility and the and the understanding of like okay like what do I actually what can I learn from this right right so. well learning is is really super fun and uh, I so I used industrial design and special effects makeup at the, at the time I was in college at the Art Institute, which is the second college I was at. Cool. Um, they had a track where you could take industrial, and it just seems so silly to me now. But you could take industrial design, and you could take two tracks. One was special effects makeup, and the other one was product design. Jessica took product design. Wait, those were the two, <laughs> like special effects makeup or product design? Yeah. That's isn't that weird? That is weird. Yeah. Yeah. So I was so I was like, well, yeah, I'm gonna do 
the special effects because I love makeup. I love characters and costumes and sculpture. I got to do all of that. Mechanical, electrical. That was great. I made uh, like a, a latex mask that you would use like bike cords to like Henson level oh, that's puppetry. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I wasn't doing that, we were doing prosthetics. So I was actually like, you know, again, baking the latex and, you know, but I was also on the bandsaw. And I was also, Jessica and I were in the ceramics room having fun with that. And But Jess was in product design, but you guys had overlap, so you were both. Yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. So she was learning the product design element of it and doing doing whatever that was, making a car. <laughs> but using the CNC mill. But we, so the, that this thing is, there was so much crossover. So by the time that there were I love like, that it was like making a car or a Jim Hansen monster. <laughs> Those are your only choices. That's what it felt like there's, to there's me. nothing else. Yeah, I mean, there's let's cars and there's the Muppets. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. This was a good 20 years ago too. So I have like, fair. I have a lot more of my memory bank. No to... middle ground. There's no, there's no like, uh, yeah. like, I mean, like now I feel like digital is a big part of it, which like, I mean, fucking iPhones didn't it's exist. It's so back funny then. that you yeah. say that because I was actually at Carlo college and I was going for like just liberal arts and I was like, oh, maybe art therapy. And then I was like, oh, they have a branch program for, um, animation. And I'm a huge fan of, um, you know, like Night Before Christmas and stop motion. And I was like, well, maybe I'll just do animation. Because I knew I wanted to sew and I want to make tiny things and creatures and critters. My favorite thing was Wallace and Gromit when I was yeah, a Yeah, Wallace kid. and Gromit. Yeah, yeah, love that. So there was, <laughs> there, was a, a, there was a connection program between Carlo and the Art Institute. Yeah. And why did I not go to the Art Institute first, even though they scouted me in high school? Because I wanted um, more out of college. And I just felt like they, didn't, they weren't selling me on it. Whatever yeah, their programs were, didn't seem serious. And I was like, I want more. Um, but anyway, I, after a year and a half, I did bounce from Carlo. I found out about, I was taking a tour of the sixth floor for animation for that program I was in. And they were like, oh, well, let's look at the eighth floor in just design. And I was like, my life just changed. What well, do you mean? Industrial design. Wait, I can make stuff and use my hands for a living? Yeah. And I worked sewing into it for every project I did. That's awesome. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm going to sew, too. So. Yeah, there's a, there's a way to shoehorn this in, damn it. Exactly. <laughs> so when I had to make the mask, I made a whole costume for it. When I did the prosthetic, I made a whole costume for it. Oh, when I had awful. to make creatures, they were plushies. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and I wasn't forced into it. And I you was... used the skills you got. I mean, like, you know, yeah. you do it from your, your perspective and your angle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah, not knowing where the heck I was going with that or what I was. I mean, when I was do. going to computer science school, when I was because like, I at some point I had to sort of rein it into a major just to finish college. Like I, I was, you know, like kind of bored in class. I was like sketching pictures of you know, um, it was schematics. Like there were like different electrical schematics I was trying to do as exercises just to teach myself. And you know, I mean, I would go and I would cut metal in a machine shop, like at the Carnegie Mellon Box Club after I got off pit and. You know, in my brain, I was like, this is what I really want to do, but there's not a degree for this. So I'm going to just teach myself I, all the know, other bits. I love that. And I love meeting people like you who did that and who do that. So when we came back from L.A., Joey was actually teaching at the Art Institute and he was teaching in special effects, you know, and I would come in um, just to say hi or whatever. And I would sit down with those students and I would say they and it seemed like at that point they were Joey was saying that there was a lot of uh, it, uh, they weren't happy with the what was in the schedule and they wanted this and they wanted that and I said you guys you have floors up here and down here with other degrees work with the photographers work with the ID people work with the other departments yeah, hang out <laughs> yeah make things together create portfolios now start now don't wait on what someone says in black and white on paper you should be doing to get your degree if your heart if you want to make something and do something network yeah. and also at that time and this was like 2013 I was like watch YouTube Learn how to do stuff. Don't just lean on other people and what they think a degree should be made of. Whatever your portfolio f- is going to show is what you have. Yeah, that and makes as sense. Mr. Henderson would say, your portfolio is only as good as your worst piece. I like that. Yeah. So I, I encourage them to do what it was you were doing. And I hope that the kids who are watching this today do that too. Well, a big part of it for me, I mean, and I think this is still around. I mean, I think I know it's still on. The Carnegie Mellon Robotics Club was uh-huh. great. Uh-huh. So, like, they let me in even though I wasn't a student. I snuck in when I was at Pitt. I was, like, I, I was trying to fix a computer, and I, I came across this group of people just making stuff. And I was, like, this is awesome. And that's where I met Ariel. He was, like, in the industrial design school, and mm-hmm. I was, like, going to Pitt for computer science, and we started making stuff together. And, you know, I – and. 
I don't know, like just became instant friends and like, you know, it was people just making stuff for the sake of making stuff, but they all go on to do really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I think you probably know Rich Juknowitz, who was like the engineering director at Four Moms and... Uh, yes, I've met a, a lot of yeah. people in the four moms. And yeah, he, w he was on the podcast, and, mm -hmm. and he's at Mind Vision yeah. Systems now. I think yeah. he's a VP there, but yeah. he's a good buddy of mine. And, like, he was in the Carnegie Mellon Robotics Club, you know? And, yeah. like, Jurgen Pedersen from RE Squared mm -hmm. was in the Carnegie Mero Mellon Robotics Club. Uh, their CTO, Keith Gunnett, was in the Carnegie Mellon Robotics Club. Like, all these people, you know, they went on to do awesome and amazing things, you know, like, all over the industry, like, you know, kind of did some time in the Carnegie Mellon Robotics Club. Like, yeah. I, there's somebody I know just got a job at Gecko Robotics, and they were telling me, like, the name of their boss, and I'm like, where have I heard that name before? Oh, right. That's the guy that I gave a donation to when he was at the Carnegie Mellon Robotics Club. Wow. And so, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, I, I so, do sorry. like that. I like, no, no, I, I like that there is a sort of small world activity to, uh, well, activity, I mean, accent to <laughs> industrial design and uh, I, uh pittsburgh that's one thing i love about P pittsburgh is it is just this little melting pot you know of of this creativity and um even though it's spread around the world like i did live in la for three years between oh yeah but and i think that's better like if you if you get to dip into different cultures and yeah. like, take stuff with you like i mean when i was out there person. there were so many notes back to pittsburgh all the time, but I would be in, I lived, I worked in all the industries out there, makeup, modeling, uh, fashion design, special effects, and costume design and costume creation and production. Someone in every one of those realms knew, knew someone from Pittsburgh or someone from Pittsburgh was coming in. You know, there was this eerie connection. It was like creeping me out because I, I went out there to like try new things and it was like there's Steelers bars around the corner too. There's Steelers bars everywhere. I yeah. Mean, that's, that's been, like, we lived in upstate New York, and we had a Steelers bar in Ithaca, like a small town in upstate New York. Yeah, yeah. I, I know Ithaca, actually. There were a pair of twins who I went to the Art Institute with who were from Ithaca. Nice. Yeah, these ID twins. But they were both in the product development thing. But yeah, and they could probably tell you there was a Steelers bar there. Yeah, right. Yeah. And also, the the movie and the, the entertainment had just started, like, in, in the strip district, there were these... Uh, they were doing commercials and movies and we went to LA and I was like, now everyone's talking about the movie industry booming in Pittsburgh. And we went, it was, we can't get away. <laughs> Not that we wanted to, we didn't, and we don't care. We just want adventure. No, it's a great place to live. Like yeah. you asked me mm -hmm. earlier today, like, you know, why do I love Pittsburgh? And, you know, I was like, well, I never said I loved it, but now that you mentioned yeah. it, I do love it. And <laughs> I mean, I think the reason is it's like super reasonable to live here. We've got great culture. I mean, mm -hmm. we've got an awesome, you know, just professional scene that is on the rise. Mm -hmm. I think we're attracting better and better talent and mm -hmm. technology. Very respectable. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just a great place to live. Yeah. I, I love it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's one of the, I feel like it's one of the, the big veins of, from the heart of the United States. I feel For like sure. we're in there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like non-pretentious. Like I feel like Pittsburgh's not up its own ass like mm -hmm. other cities I could mention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like there's you can really start something on your own here. I feel like it it, it holds the American spirit for sure. Like because yeah. I mean, yeah, like the startup costs are low, but mm -hmm. the ceiling is high. You know, and there's mm -hmm. there's a lot and there's great talent and there's a lot you can do. Yeah, and I feel like the people are nicer here and they're better. I mean, I was only out there for three years, but I and I've been in other places, but. Uh, this the community is like small at least the one i'm in here you know and yeah. that is startup and it is tech and it is you know all all the things that mean create and like people know each other everyone knows each other all right so i think we're getting to a pretty good stopping point here uh is there anything you want to plug as we near the end of the app sure if you're looking to reach out and learn more about some product development or you have a project just go to genrocket.com there's a contact form uh reach out and let's chat Awesome. Hey, yeah. thanks for coming on, John. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. A pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. If you've made it this far, chances are you'll like other episodes too. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Radio Public. Subscribe today to get notified when the latest episodes release and support the channel. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is sponsored by SKA Robotics. If you're in the market for elite field robotics expertise, please consider hiring SKA Robotics. They sponsor this podcast and solve some of the toughest engineering problems in the world. SKA Robotics can be found at skarobotics.com. Thanks again and see you on the next one.